Today's video is all about two concepts that are involved in the scientific method that are commonly confused. They are validity and reliability. So what is validity? Well, validity is asking the question, is my experiment actually testing what it's meant to be testing? Or how appropriate is my experimental method in addressing the aim of this experiment? Now to really understand what validity is, we need to ask ourselves, what is an experiment? Simply put, an experiment is a set of measurements that we take that we then analyze in order to see if there is a link or relationship between different things. If we were to put it in a different way, we could say that we have two variables or two factors. Let's call them X and Y, and there is a relationship between them. An experiment is going to test what happens if X is manipulated or changed, and how is that going to affect Y. Now we can use different terms for X and Y. We can call X the independent variable and Y the dependent variable. So if I make a measurable change to X, I should be able to observe a measurable effect on Y. If I manipulate X in some way, which is measured, I should observe a measured effect in Y. So let's look at an example to see how this plays out. Let's call X our independent variable a chemical or a fertilizer and we are wanting to see how that affects the growth of a plant which we call our dependent variable Y. So if I add a chemical X how does it affect the growth of plant Y? Now, validity comes in with the following. In reality, there is not just one factor that affects Y. So X plays a role and can cause an effect on Y, but so can A, B, C, and D. These are all variables that can cause a change to Y. If we're going to use our example of the fertilizer, something like light could affect the growth of a plant, or the amount of water, or the amount of carbon dioxide, or the temperature. Those are all things that could affect the growth of a plant, not just our chemical X. So if we see a plant growing at a certain rate, how are we to know whether it's chemical X or it's the sunlight or it's something else, B, C, or D? So that's why when you design your experiment, you need to do it in a way which controls all of these unknown or these extra variables. So when you design your experiment, you need to first have something that you're going to compare it to. And we call that our control. So when you set up your experiment, you make your control identical in every way to your experiment, except for one thing, and that is your independent variable. You'll see here that only the experiment has got the X, um, chemical X added to it which means that any change that we see in Y, any difference that we observe between the experiment and the control can only be due to our independent variable, which is the fertilizer. So we let the experiment run and we see that actually there is a very marked difference between the growth of the plants in the experiment compared to the control. And we have ensured validity because we have fixed all the other variables. So how can I ensure validity in my experiments? 
Well, when you design your experiment, consider the following. Have you identified all the factors that could affect the value of de your dependent variable? Does your design cancel out the effects of other factors except for your independent variable? And is the only difference between your experiment and control changes to the independent variable? The next thing we're going to focus on is reliability. So what is the reliability? Well, something's reliable is if when you do it again, you get the same result. And reliability allows us to have trustworthy results. So if we look at our experiment that we've just been examining, we have a plant that grows well with chemical X compared to a plant that grows much slower and smaller in our control group without chemical X. Now, we cannot be certain that it's only chemical X that has caused this result, because we've only just done it the one time. So if we were to make our experiment more reliable, we would do it again. We just do it again, and if we get a same or similar result, it can add to the reliability of our um, results. But doing it twice is also not necessarily enough, so we can do it another time. Now, often in our classrooms, when we do experiments, we only do it three times because that's how much time we often have. But when you're doing your own experiments, the more repeats you do, the larger your sample size, the more reliable your experiment. So we should be doing this experiment dozens of times. And then you can work out an average for your experimental data and compare it to your control data to get a more reliable result. So to finish off, we can ask, how can I increase my reliability in an experiment? Well, you, all you need to do is repeat your experiment by either doing it multiple times or increasing your sample size. And then using your average values across those multiple repeats in your comparisons will increase your reliability. I hope this video has been helpful and all the best as you continue in your science endeavors.